You're watching The Tasting Channel. Up next, 2001, A Taste Odyssey. Affirmative, Noodle. I read you. I'm sorry, Noodle. I'm afraid I can't do that. I think you know what the problem is, just as well as I do. Followed by... In space, no one can hear you beep. This is Sarah. And this week, I've been working on tasting feet, still, for my robot noodle feet. So I mentioned that two years ago, I had this awesome artist residency at the European Space Agency's technical facility, where I worked on the Wandering Artist Project, which involved creating behavioral mechanisms for my robot noodle that would enable him to interact with the surface he's standing on in a bunch of ways that are similar to what big kid space probes do. I talked a little bit about the bean planting module in my last update. I'm going to pick a different one to cover. I've been sort of reverse engineering these because I mentioned that I hurried up and made the second iteration of each of these feet, exhibited them, and then kind of shelved all of them. And it happened so fast that I don't even really remember how they work. I do remember that this one more or less didn't have issues. And this is uh, the one I'm gonna talk about today. It's the actual tasting foot. I know I call all of them tasting feet, but the only one that actually does something like tasting is this one. And it's equipped with litmus paper. So it enables Noodle to test the surface he's standing on for acidity or alkalinity. The way that this works is, you can, you can actually kind of see it, it's neat. There's this uh, these two reels in here, those red circles. And they basically work very similar to a uh, cassette reel. And you can buy litmus paper, luckily, in spools already. It comes that way. So I put one full reel of the stuff, or spool of the stuff, on the bottommost reel. And the top reel is actually motor driven. So as it rotates, it feeds that litmus paper downwards to the bottom of the foot, where a tiny little segment is stretched parallel with the ground. And there's a solenoid in here that is responsible for pressing that strip of paper so that it makes a firm contact with the ground. After a test has been administered, the paper continues to travel back up the other side of the foot, but not before passing through a little dark chamber right here. And there's actually a color sensor in here that checks to see what color the paper changed. The cool thing about this is this is the first instance where I utilized a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is this thing right here in the back. And this has a database of everything that Noodle's ever tasted. So once he does a, a test of the ground, he'll actually remember how that particular surface tasted relative to every other thing he's ever tried. Yeah, sampled. So it's like his flavor bank. Oh yeah, the other thing that the Pi could do, and I totally forgot about this, um, it was connected to the internet. The Raspberry Pi Zero is Wi-Fi enabled, or one of the versions is, and he would actually tweet to his Twitter account when he tasted something and what flavor it was. So hypothetically, if I were to taste this table right now and it happened to be really acidic, say there's just a stain of lemon juice on here for some reason, um, Noodle has actually tasted lemon juice before. It turns the paper pink. So if he happened to pull a pink sheet of paper right now, he would know to relate that color to the flavor of lemons, and he would tweet to his Twitter account that he just tasted something that was very lemony. So that's his way of uh, relating back to us humans and informing us of things that he has experienced. So I think it's time that I mention that each one of these feet is driven by one universal brain. And Mark, helped me lay out the board, and he, he more or less designed it from the ground up because we were really pressed for time. And the brain can support 
the functions of all four of the feet. You just have to tell the brain which foot it's supposed to be servicing and it knows what to do in code. And the brain is called the croissant. And I actually unscrewed this top so I could show you. It's called the croissant for its shape. There's this little open crescent kind of like cavity right here uh, that's needed for the clearance of the leg bones when they bend. So all of the important bits actually wrap around that. The only thing that was kind of wonky about this uh, module was that the paper would sometimes, for whatever reason, uh, come loose and it would start going out the side of his foot instead of going down. And that was due to poor tensioning. So if there's anything I would improve about this module, it would be probably the addition of more rollers that forced the paper into a kind of a zigzag path to make sure that there was proper, I guess, tension. See if I can make it a better litmus foot. Yeah. What else do I need to say? I think that's it. All right, so I'm gonna get back to work. Uh, I have a lot of things to do. I'm gonna try and crank out one of these updates once a week, but we'll see. Until then, as always, thank you for watching and keep making awesome stuff out there.